every chance that something will break this evening so apologies for that in advance uh, i've done about 10 tests over the last hour and all of them have involved some sort of um uh i can't swear already it's in the first 30 seconds but um so some error of judgment on my part can you um could you type something in the box to tell me that you can hear me and you can see me please um that'd be a very helpful start thank you and cheers san gervese tonight um it's good it's good there, there might be a delay on the chat okay right i've got that now brilliant thank you okay that's <laughs> that's the first thing right mission accomplished you can hear me excellent all right so um thank you very much for giving up your thursday evening um I'm going to try to keep this uh, relatively succinct, but those of you who have suffered previous uh, editions will know that that's not a straightforward task for me. Um, I've got a short agenda, which was as per the emails that I sent out. Uh, actually, very quickly on the emails that I sent out, I have bombarded you this last week with um, what I hope is some some good stuff as well as um as well as uh a lot of probably marketing emails those who have been with us longer will know that it, it's a couple of times a year we probably do this but generally um we very few pitch emails and lots of content lots of great long editorial from some brilliant writers who really um think deeply about the game but are able to articulate their deep thoughts in a very um every person kind of way so i'm really proud of the writers uh, and occasionally i chip in as well um so stick around for that you've you've borne the brunt of my email barrage in the last week or so but it's all downhill from here okay so um in a packed show tonight um what are we going to talk about um i'm going to quickly touch on the art of the possible i know you know but just it, it's worth re-saying um i'm going to talk very briefly at the start and the end about some additional reading and watching um because there's only so much that i can cover in this video um <laughs> james i'll try and get it all done in in time for the united game but uh, that might be pushing it um i'll be looking at race examples by then anyway so um you'll you'll have the the general guts of it by then um after that we're gonna quickly look at the draw analyzer which is a tool i've made free to everybody now uh, I'm very pleased to be able to do that. I think it's a really useful tool, um, but it does take a, just a little bit of getting to grips with. So we'll do that. Um, shouldn't take too long. And then for those of you who are new to Gigi's Gold, um, thank you and welcome. And I, I really think, I genuinely think um, this is going to improve your race reading skills. I think it's going to make it more fun. Um, I think it's going to empower you. I know that sounds a bit wanky. Um, three and a half minutes on my clock, first swear word. There won't be, actually, I can't say there won't be too many. There might be quite a few. Um, but it, it genuinely is a different caliber of service, of information product than other uh, racing form websites. And um, I want to, I don't, I don't want you to believe me, take me at my word. I want to show you. So I'm going to do that. Um, uh, what else have we got? Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to talk about which races to play in and when to steer clear. Um, very, very important. Like you can be a really good form judge. You can be very good at your staking. But if you're playing too many races or picking the wrong races, um, you're kind of hamstringing yourself before you start. So that's a really key thing that we'll touch on tonight. Um, and then we'll look at some races. Yeah, we'll look at a few things, a, a few ins um, and just generally show at a quite a high level probably um how the gg stuff works and things to look out for if you're not familiar with it so if that all sounds slayed uh i'm going to take you i think that's right every time a swear word is uttered i'm going to need a bigger glass though cheers okay right um where are we going to start further uh further watching and reading no art of, art of the possible is the first thing right so Let's just quickly say that um, 
this <laughs> this is good information, but it's not a magic bullet. It's not a miracle cure. Um, if you're currently losing 20% a year, um, you're not suddenly going to be winning 20%. If you're, if you're level at the moment, well done. You're still not going to be winning 20%, most likely, depending on how you bet. If you only have a few bets, you might. Um, but if you turn over quite a few, then you probably won't. Um, this is going to give you more information. It's going to help you to make uh, better judgment calls. Um, really importantly, it's going to help it to be a, the process to be more fun. Um, I think this is something that is overlooked these days. Most of the sales pitches are win X pounds, and that's because they're tipping services. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's not really any engagement with a tipping service. It's just the name of a horse. Um, and it's the good ones. And there are, there are a few, um, quite a few in fairness. Um, they have a little bit of uh, explanation about why that horse. Um, but it's even it's much better if you can do that for yourself. That's the way I see it anyway. So um, don't expect miracles. Um, do expect to improve from wherever you are now to the next level and then over hopefully a short period of time, but over a period of time to another level again and so on. Um, nothing is going to happen overnight. Also, nothing is going to happen if you don't look at the stuff. If you um, if you pay your subscription and then don't bother using it, um, you know, there, there are some excellent books on this shelf behind me. Um, in fact, they're pretty much all excellent books. I've read some of them, uh, and those are the ones that I've got the most value from. Um, I, I intend to read all of them at some point, and, um, you know, life gets in the way and all that. But if you're, if you're already looking at another race card and you're now going to be looking at this one, I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Okay, so that's the art of the possible. Miracles are impossible, but um, good things are not, and you will get lots of good things. Um, we have got lots of uh, reading and watching, which I would encourage you to do, not necessarily right away, but in your own time over the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, I'm just going to quickly... Right. So this is going to be a good test. This is the first time I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, and this is the thing that I've had quite a bit of bother with uh, during, <laughs> during rehearsals. Let's call them that. Um, let's try this. OK. And then I've got to do this. Now, apologies. I've got to keep my ugly mug in the bottom corner. Otherwise, the microphone doesn't work for some reason. Doubtless my idiocy. Um, anyway, right. So what I want to show you on here is I want to go to, um, my GGs and this is actually a, uh, a free, um, subscriber account that I've got in this window. Hopefully you can see this I'm a bit paranoid now. So I'm just going to double check. Yes, I can see that you can see great. Um, so what a couple of things I want to point out here, um, there's, there's loads of configuration options in here. Um, more if you're on a, um, on a, on a gold subscription, but there's loads of configuration stuff. So do take time to familiarize with that. As a free user, um, you will have access to one of these very cool features or reports every day. Today, it's the instant expert, which we'll look at in a minute for all races. So that's great. Um, what I wanted to show you particularly is that down here, we've got some stuff to look at. So very helpful web TV shows. These are really good. The feedback on these was awesome, um, apart from that typo there, which I've just spotted. Um, I would very much encourage you to watch these. They're between an hour and an hour and a half each. So on a boring evening when you've got nothing else to do, grab a glass and um, tune in. I, I genuinely, you know, it's difficult for me to say that they, they're, they're very good because I did them, but the feedback is that they're really helpful. So um, do check them out. And as you can see, the the first one is all about kind of um, context and managing expectations um, and a few other bits and pieces. Second one's all about the race cards. Third one's about the reports. And the fourth one's all about our tools. Um, when you've done those, uh, depending on where you are and what you want to achieve, you might have a look at this challenge section as well. Um, Again, it's broken down into parts, intro, race selection, shortlisting, and bet selection. And um, again, 
you know, <laughs> it, it, it sounds a bit narcissistic, but I, I do think these are pretty good and 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 certainly worth your time. I hope so anyway. Um, so that's that's for another day. Now let's get on with the show, as they say. Um, oh, before we get on with the show, one last thing. Um, under the FAQ, not not in the most obvious place, is a link to the gold user guide. This has answers to lots of questions you have and some that you don't yet have. And it's all um, there's a good contents block at the front. So just click on the thing um, that you're interested in and it will whiz you down to the relevant bit and you can read all about that. Um, and if you click control home, keyboard shortcut, you go back to the top. Uh, this is going to be updated in a day or two or maybe a week because um, we've got a couple of new reports coming. I'm very excited about those. Not quite in a position to show you them tonight. Um, and I'll probably forget anyway, but uh, I'm excited about both of them. And um, I hope you will be too. OK, so that is that. Right. Now let's get into the good stuff. Um, the draw analyzer, the free draw analyzer, which I now cannot find the link for. Bear with me. First of my many seamless segues. Uh, okay. Just got to get the link and drop it in here. All righty. Right. So. Um, if you're familiar with this, great. If you're not, allow me to introduce it. Now, what I would say, I'm, I'm gonna, just going to spend literally a couple of minutes on this because there's some good information in the report about, I mean, basically all of the research in that report was done using this. Um, and I've talked about it in a previous video as well. And there's a bit in the user guide. So I don't want to go overboard with this. But what I, in terms of process, in terms of if, you, if you're thinking, right, it's York today, it is York today and it's York tomorrow as well. Um, uh, and I'm kind of interested if there's this race tomorrow is a 20 runner, seven furlong handicap, um, which is the sort of race that masochists and miracle miracle seekers uh, tend to play in. Um, I think it's actually, it's a very interesting race. Uh, it's a, a three-year-old and up, but there aren't any three-year-olds in it. So there's, so although, in condition terms, it's three-year-old and up. It's actually a four-year-old and up. Um, this is a race where the first thing to do with the draw analyzer is to is is not to go to the draw analyzer. It's to go to courses and then either UK or Irish race courses. Um, and then on that page, select the course that you're interested in. In this case, I am interested in York. Um, there's all sorts of info on there. But this is the thing I want to look at. I want to look at the course map. Um, the course map contextualizes the data in here without without understanding the track layout these are just numbers right and they you know they they, they might be happenstance they don't they don't necessarily mean anything without the context and i think a mistake a lot of punters make um in fact the vast majority of punters make is that they don't they don't put a race in 3d they don't they don't visualize how a race is going to be run and you know it sounds kind of um a bit grandiose but really it's not it's simply a case of this is a seven furlong race at york and it starts here on this dog leg in a chute and they go here and then they go down here so the low numbers are here and the high numbers are here now if you're drawn in the middle and you've got a bit of gate speed, you can probably cut the corner. If you're drawn on the inside and you're a little bit slow, you might get a bit of trouble here when when the chute meets the, the, the apex of the main track. If you're drawn high, you're probably going to go further than the others, whatever. So that's the hypothesis, right? There, there, there's a picture of the race course, course and distance. Um, and now we've got, now when we go to look at this, seven furlongs at ascot we've got a picture in our mind of of what feels sensible from a from a visualization perspective um does that make any sense uh hopefully it does right okay so york 
seven furlongs to seven furlongs. Actual, I've talked about card and actual uh, previously. I'm not going to talk about it again. Going, they changed the going from good to soft today to good to soft, good in places, and then another race later to good. If they get the rain, it might go to good to soft, and if they don't, it probably go to good to firm. Um, not helpful. One of the things, one of the great things about Gigi's is that um, it's very uh, configurable and it's very agile as well. So what I mean by that is if the going did change to good to firm, you just have to do that in the little going drop down. Um, and that's reflected in all of the form tools. And if it went, if it bucketed down and went soft, I don't think it's going to do that. But if it did, that's all you have to do. And then in all the tools that you look at thereafter, um, let's look at this race again. Uh, you can see that the going drop down is soft and it's reflected. Um, and if I look at full form and um, I can't actually do this with the, with the, um, uh, with the free one. So I'll have to show you that later on. But, but basically if I click on the going one here, then it's going to show me only the soft ground runs. So, so that's that. Right. So seven furlongs, good to firm, good to soft. I'm going to do um, uh, 16 plus runner handicaps, I think. Handicaps. And um, yeah, uh, let's have a look at recent history. And I've got a low, middle and high at the top. Um not a huge amount of races. I've got 17 races in this sample, which is obviously not a lot. Um, so you've only got, so, you know, if you're looking at the win percentages, it's not massively instructive. Um, place percentages also, I, I mean, obviously th there are more places than there are winners, so it's, it's better. But this thing over here, PRB is the one for me anyway. Uh, percentages are percentage of rivals beaten and the reason this is the one for me particularly with draw so not not with everything necessarily but with draw especially is because all of these runners all of these 210 uh 313 runners they they all get some sort of score associated with them and contribute to this number over here so we can see that um low and middle slightly above the 50%, the 0.5 we'd expect, and high slightly below. No, no, nothing nothing massive uh, there. But if we look at the constituent draw, so this is for the individual draws, and this is the middle section on the draw analyzer, we can see that after you get to stool 13, you get this big old slippery slope <laughs> down here. And, and essentially, it's pretty hard for the high drawn numbers to get to get involved and, and and that's kind of reflected in the um in the win the win and the wins and places as well you know very hard for these high numbers to get involved now any horse can win any race so you know if if stool 20 <laughs> goes and wins tomorrow don't be in your face matt um because that sort of stuff can happen but what i wanted to articulate here was i sorted this by odds and um you got this 14 stool 14 is the favorite um might be able to overcome that stool 20 is quite a well fancied runner and you know he's got to do something that none of these other guys have done before um and i think stool 17 mole's memory is also up near the top of the the list now again you know any, any one of those three can win but they've got a tough job because of the course configuration and where they're situated. Um, so th that's all I want to say really is when you're doing your, your draw analyzer research, make sure to go to the course pages. Again, they're up here, UK race courses and Irish race courses and check out these course maps and look at the, look at the distances like in your, in your PDF, you've got the mile and the mo one mile one because of this really sharp turn here, um, and again, you know, outside stalls, have, they've either got to drop in and ride for luck in behind or they've got to go the long way around. Um, and neither of those are advantageous. So just just use a bit of common sense um, with the draw analyzer. And I think you'll find there are all sorts of um, ins with it once you use this, these course graphics as the starting point rather than the tool itself. OK, so 
that we gave away for free. Um, let's just hide this a second, see if I can do this seamless segue. Here we are again. Excellent. So everybody has access to that, whether or not you are in gold or you are not. Um, you're very welcome to that. And I think it's going to, you know, really um, level up your understanding of the the fact that not every race, not every runner in every race has the same chance to win from the starting gates. Um, and sometimes the disadvantage is quite marked. And sometimes the horses at the top of the market are some of the most disadvantaged. So if we know that, you know, we can factor that into their price. Um, okay, that's draw analyzer. Right, now, where to start? Um, where to start with Gigi's Gold? Um, the best place to start is uh, when, you when you land on the thank you page or from the Gigi's, my Gigi's page. Um, let me see if I can share this. Seamless, not seamlessly, nothing is seamless on this. Uh, right, okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, right. Um, on the My Gigi's page, now this is a gold My Gigi's, this is my admin account. There's this <laughs> very helpful link here that says read this first. So, you know, read this first. Um, it, let me just click on that and then you can see what's on there. Uh, <laughs> where do I start? Right, okay, great. So, there's some suggestions here and they are only suggestions um, because you know better than me kind of what you, where you're at and what sort of things um, are of interest to you. But there are some suggestions if you're short on time or experience, uh, some suggestions if you've got a little bit more of either or both of those and some further suggestions if you're a bit further down the track again. Um, and then at the bottom, there are some things that anybody can get to grips with. So definitely start with that page. Uh, again, it's right there. Oops, right there, right at the top. Um, the other thing, and I make no apology for mentioning this again, watch these videos. If you watch them, I, I recorded these in, uh, I think it was in October, late, late October last year. So they probably talk about the jumps a little bit, um, but the, the concepts are universal. So do have a look at those. Um, maybe one every one a week, you know, whatever you want to do. But um, I, I wouldn't recommend, it's not like a Netflix binge watch, let's say that. Yeah. Um, you'd probably get through a, a Jeroboam of something uh, uh, groggy if you were attempting that that particular mission. Um, yeah, so definitely, definitely um, work through these at your convenience. Be aware of the user guide. Uh, again, this is this is imminently going to be updated. In fact, I'm writing the update at the moment um, for the new reports. So that's something else to be familiar with. And you know, it's not it's not unputdownable. It's not a cover to cover read. It's not a bestseller, but it's definitely a very very good reference text um, for your uh, for your further and better understanding. Okay. Um, is there an option to put the user guide into a PDF? Christopher asks. Yes, Christopher. On the My Gigi's page, um, below the new gold subscribers read this first, is an is a link to access the user guide. And I'm just um, right. Okay, so that. Historically, that always was a PDF, but now it's a um, it's a link to the web page. Uh, we I, I do have PDFs of that, so what I'll do is I'll I'll put a PDF link on there as well, uh, and then you can get that. You can get that. That's no problem, right? What's next? Um, did I want to say anything else about that? No. Okay. Now I want to. The next thing I want to do is is kind of walk you around the race cards and this is um i guess especially for people who are new um or newish but it should hopefully also act as a good refresher um for everyone else um so let's again see if i can not bugger this up 
vaguely impossible and further apologies for my for the omnipresence of my physiognomy uh, if i might be so bold um these are the race cards let's talk about them um hopefully you can see them just going to double check uh yes 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 okay right so um the first thing i want to talk about is um the the various ways to um you can't actually see any races here that's the first thing right so plus and minus here plus shows all of the the race cards um guess what minus does you're way ahead of me uh that does that um if you want to look at a specific card let's say york just click on the blue york bar dun dun and there's the york card if you want information about a race card let's say you want to have a crack at kill began tomorrow night click the old kill began course info link or indeed any other relevant race course link um, and that's going to take you to the the page and um got your course maps whole bunch of stuff on here um about pace and draw and when draws relevant um really useful information not wallpaper not there for the fun of it there to help you with your punting so if you're if you know the course configuration all good but if you don't or if you've never really thought about that before we've got them right there for you so um i mean really you know do do start getting a bit more familiar with how race courses are laid out you, you'll be amazed at um how that changes the way you think about a race all of a sudden it's not horses it's um horses and their positions it's run styles it's this thing and that thing so it, it definitely will help you to understand more about a race just by looking at the, the course configurations so that's that okay so now tomorrow there are let's put it on compact a second tomorrow there are one two three four five six seven meetings and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven races at each of seven meetings. So that's 49, 50. We've got 52 races tomorrow. Um, who's going to look through all of those? Nobody in their right mind. So we kind of have to work out a way to um, to manage this down, to get this to a manageable number of races that we can actually um, go at. and we have this show filters button over here if i click on that i've got a bunch of options here and i can eliminate uh essentially what whatever i'm not interested in so i can get rid of the national hunt races i can get rid of the irish races i could get rid of the uh the higher class races or the lower class races whatever i want to do i can get rid of small fields <clears throat> i can get rid of non handicaps i can get rid of um races beyond 10 furlongs <clears throat> and then all of a sudden i've got a much much more manageable short list of races that suits my my style and if you haven't really if you haven't got a style yet then what i would suggest is um older horse handicaps with between let's say eight and 12 runners so manageable field sizes um a bunch of established form in the book now i've got this five to ten furlongs here five to a mile and a quarter but just doing that i've got uh five races here and if i just put it on um by meeting they're both four-year-old plus and actually they're all four year old plus but there might have been a three year old handicap in there as well so i've basically got um you know on that basis i've got five races to look at and we started with 52 so that's um that's kind of useful uh a, a really good way to shortlist and, and and i think that's one of the most important things again you know like bookmakers and tv channels they kind of they railroad us towards um they railroad us towards the 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 races on the TV. Sorry, excuse me while I uh, make a mess of this again. Um, 
that, and they tend to be the most competitive races and, and and the hardest races in which to find the winner. Now, not always. And some of these big heritage handicaps, as you saw with the Victoria Cup in one of my videos, hopefully, um, you know, really big field. And just in a few minutes, I'm able to find a horse with um, really solid credentials at, in a 27 runner field. And obviously, they're not all like that, but just by eliminating a bunch of them, uh, including sometimes the winner, it should be said, um, on draw and pace, and then looking at those who are best suited to the conditions and or identifying any that might be potential improvers, we can very quickly get those those big handicaps down to something more manageable. But um, in the main, we should be choosing the races that we want to bet in, not have somebody choose them for us. And if we're just always tempted to bet the TV races or the, the big bookmaker sponsored handicaps <laughs> go figure um then you know we're kind of on the back foot we're playing we're playing an away game at their pitch um in those in, in those contexts so use that tool to um use those those uh filters on the race card menu to to choose the kind of races that are that give you the best chance and they may not be the ones that i've just articulated but i mean i do tend to look at those those type of races in the main they suit my style um Gigi's gold has a some really good information around those races and i'm going to show you in a second so um yeah that's that's that that's one of, i think that's one of the things that people get more hung up on than anything else like you know you just you've got this new tool you look at tomorrow's racing there are seven meetings there are 52 races where the foxtrot do you start well, you start by getting rid of as many of them as possible so that you can spend whatever you can distribute whatever amount of time you've got in a much more sensible and meaningful way. Um, even if you had like 20 minutes, you know, you could probably have a, a good look at four races, um, not in great depth, but in a reasonable amount of depth in that in that sort of time period. So um, that's a very, very if you take nothing else away from this this time um i think that's you know it, it's it's very underrated um choosing your battles choose the battles where you've got a chance don't have that decision made for you and then when you look at those races you may find that nothing stands out and we'll come on to that in a second and if nothing stands out if it looks too competitive or you haven't really got a clue or the pace doesn't the, the, is a the shape of the race is somewhat amorphous you know doesn't you don't know if, what's going to go on or whatever um then don't play don't play okay uh, another question here leon says um where do i find which side they put the stalls and which number goes on the rails <clears throat> so number one will always be, they changed it a while back it used to be uh, a lot more confusing than it is now nowadays number one is always against um a rail the rail so that's that um what other questions have we got here pelvis asks anything for longest travelers nothing for longest travelers pelvis no um i did do some research into this a while back and um you know there are obviously there are obviously some trainers in fact anthony honeyball who Gigi sponsors is one of them um who will not go a long way unless he thinks the horse has got a good chance to win. Now that said, um, he's taken horses a long way, believing that they were that had a very good chance and it didn't pan out that way. Um, I've done some research in, in another database and, I, and I've, there isn't, I don't think there's too much in it in, in the round as a generalism, but of course there are, there are some trainers who, who, you know, who, who wouldn't go beyond the local track unless they thought they had a very strong chance. Um, uh, Errol asks about stalls being set up in different areas of the track. I think that's a really good question, Errol. Um, it can make a difference. Um, we don't cater for it, but I do personally look out for it. Um, I look on the BHA website to see where the stalls are. Um, I... I don't think it make it doesn't in most cases it doesn't make a massive difference in some cases it does so um Dave Renham's done some really good stuff on our website in fact I'll just show you how to 
to access this because that that is a very good question um so if you if you go to if you're on um the home page and we've got this little box up here I'll just double check that you can see this a bit paranoid about this at the moment um uh yeah okay so we've got this little uh, magnifying glass up here and you can search for stuff in here so if you for instance searched for um air for pace and that is a, a, a not a great for instance because i <laughs> i obviously know that there is um there is an article here um dave random one of our writers and and a bit of a draw and pace man has written um a whole raft of articles in fact probably better just to search for dave renham pace uh if you do that then you'll get funnily enough 41 search results you know dave's dave's written a, a chunk of stuff so um he's written enough about it that you could you could put that in there and then you could choose a track so you know there's a york one here for example um if you wanted to know about and again the starting point is always the course layout um you know well worth saying that again but there's loads of stuff in here that uh dave has taken hours to write he's a mathematician math teacher and statistician by trade he loves this stuff and i have to say that i love it too and i know lots of you do as well um so he does actually talk about uh stool positioning in in quite a few of these so it's definitely worth checking those out if you haven't done that already um but we don't in answer to your question um we don't factor that we don't there's no allowance for that in our in our draw data no um okay let's move on to the next thing right let's go back to the race cards i just i was showing you the filters how to how to whittle down the number of races and i want to show you a couple more things on there um so i'm hopefully i'm not going to get complacent and mess this up that's not to say that won't happen um right i'm going to hide the filter so we know that we can we can reduce the number of races here actually i'm going to do that now i'm going to select on tomorrow i'm going to select handicaps only um five furlongs to a mile i think eight plus runners and um does that short list look about right oh yeah i don't want eight plus i want eight to no that's fine that's fine that's fine um i might just get rid of the irish because they are massive fields over there um no offense right so in fact i don't yeah no that's fine so again i've got two four five six seven eight nine ten 11. i've got 11 races still too many so i don't want i'm not interested in that three-year-old race so i'm going to put a line through that one there are three four-year-old plus races might have a look at those um those york races i'm not interested in the three-year-old race although i do like five furlong handicaps um this one we looked at it, it's a three-year-old plus race but actually they're all four-year-old so they've all got varying degrees of exposed form and all four at hamilton are um are exposed handicaps as well so that's good um so i think i've got how many have i got now three there because i'm ignoring that one i'm ignoring that that one four five i've got about nine races i think nine races to go at um which is again it's too many so i'm going to make a start on that and i probably won't get get through them all um in time right got to change my sheets here uh is there anything else i wanted to show you oh yeah i just want to show you quickly if you're uh on a mobile phone things look a bit different so let me hopefully this is going to work um eek okay so this is a um like a a google chrome thing that you can do to make your computer look like a mobile phone and this one is a, like an iphone 6 apparently um so the layout's slightly different you can scroll across to get the detail here um 
and so on and such like so but if i if i'm on a if i go into a race here let's go into this 135 you'll see that the actual race card layout is very different and we haven't got we've only we've got the official rating here but that's the only rating we've got um and it, essentially this is an abridged version of the desktop um layout now if i click this little button here it's going to rotate it so uh, like you're in um what do they call it landscape mode so with your with the long edge at the bottom and um all of a sudden we've got we've got some numbers now and we've got a bit more we've got you know the normal all of the familiar components are there um so i'm going to go back to the desktop version now but i did want to i did want to make mention of the fact that um <clears throat> all the same stuff is here but it's all in uh, a slightly different format on your mobile phone okay right let's get rid of that and go back to where we once was as the less literate amongst us might say um including me no doubt all right let's look at some of these races so um the first one is actually this one on my list the 135 at new market tomorrow a 13 runner seven furlong handicap um Right, I really ought to do this, hadn't I? I just need to, I need to, um, I need to be what I've said. So I want to get the new market, um, the new market course here. Now it's only got one of the two courses. So what actually happens at new market is they could, this bit is shared and then the Roly goes here and the July kind of goes off like a forked tongue um down here that the constitution of them is very similar so they've both got a dip sort of two two to one and a half furlongs out and they're both slightly elevating to the to the finish they both favor front runners typically um <clears throat> and they both have long straights so um this is the roly course and it's got you can see it's got a mile and a quarter straight um here so this race is a seven furlong race so we it's a straight seven and um what do we know right they're all fairly exposed um we can see from these green numbers that a few of the trainers are in ostensibly in good recent form um we can see from the red numbers now these are my report angles so i'm probably not going to have time to touch on that today there's loads in the user guide there's plenty in the um the reports one uh, in the web TV shows about those. Uh, honestly, these things are, the, this is one of the, in my opinion, it's one of the, um, <clears throat> well, I think it's one of the best things in, in British racing form. Um, I borrowed it uh, from my friends in America who have something similar on a race called, on a website called Stats Race Lens, uh, which is a sort of a, sort of a US version of, Gigi's gold i suppose although um it's a bit clunkier um it has got some amazing functionality and um but it's just perhaps not quite as um uh easy to use in my opinion anyway um these report angles if, if i just l let me just click on the one in the header button now that's gone a bit wonky because i went to the mobile view let's just do that quickly okay that's might have to do an F12. Never mind, I'll do that in a bit. Right. Um, what I want to do is I want to get these um, report angles. So if you click any of the icons in the header bar, it will open up that thing, that that form element for all, all of the horses. And in this case, a lot of these report angles are zero, so they don't open up. But the ones with a, <clears throat> a number greater than zero are all open. Um, and I can very quickly, this is a great way of finding um, interesting snippets about the trainer or the jockey or the horse or the sire, um, which you wouldn't necessarily be aware of. So um, it, it's pretty cool. So, for instance, did you know that um, Ed Bethel has got a 50% strike rate in, um, in turf races so far? Um, now that's clearly unsustainable, but it's a very impressive start. And this horse is a TC, which means it's a trainer change. So um, 
again, you know, you, it'd be well worth looking at um, the Ed Bethel's record with trainer changes. Uh, we can also see that the horse is down two classes. That's what this means. And it's wearing a tongue tie for the third time. So we've got a lot of information um, at our fingertips. One heart, first time cheek pieces, has had a wind up at least five runs ago. That's what five plus means. And so on. Now, one thing that caught my eye when I was looking at this race very quickly earlier was Biggles down here. Rafe Beckett, perma inform Rafe for um, cracking uh, apprentice jockey Mark Crean. Got a good chance to be a uh, champion apprentice this year, in my opinion, if he gets um, if he gets patronised by the right trainers. Uh, in the absence of Benoit de la Sayette, silly boy, um, there it's a very open race for the champion apprentice and well worth following because there's a lot of value in these apprentices, some of them. Um, this is what I wanted to highlight with Rafe and Biggles, who is an HC1 first time in a handicap. Now, this is Rafe's record with first time in a handicap. You can see that it doesn't matter if you're looking at the, the, the past year or the past two years or his record at this track in the last five years. He's got a remarkably consistent record. And this lad Biggles won last time over six furlongs at Kempton. Um, led a furlong out, kept on well. Uh, steps up to seven furlongs here. Uh, the other thing to say about him was he um, chased the leader. So he was prominent there. And I think prominent is the run style at Newmarket. So if we just look at the pace map, um, I'm going to put it on draw, put the heat map on for a second. Now we don't, Again, I, I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, normally when the weather is changeable as it is, as it is at the moment, I would actually go um, not just to the BHA site, um, which is here, uh, racing fixtures upcoming. I would recommend that you bookmark this page and then you can go to whichever fixture it is. And at the top, at the top of the page, you'll get some weather information, some going information. And this is the stuff that we publish to Twitter, to our Twitter feed at ggs underscore UK every day. So I'd recommend um, bookmarking that as well. It's just all about getting as much information as in the system as quickly as you can. And if you've got these things bookmarked, then great. Now, what if, if I was playing Newmarket tomorrow, and there's a good chance I will be, um, I will be going to the Met Office website first thing to see what the weather's done because I just – these some of these um showers are <laughs> crossing the country at the moment i mean some pl i saw some places getting an inch of rain in an hour uh we had weather be called off the other night um due to a flash flood and um you know you, you the thing that differentiates us is information knowledge is power and if there are some things that we can't know but things like that that we can know and that we can really easily access to in very short order i mean if you've if you've got these things bookmarked it's like three clicks um and you're good to go um you know really there's no excuse for not doing that so we should be doing that okay <laughs> lecture over um but do you know bha site and the met office good very good information right now we can see here what we saw um uh, or what i said earlier about this um Newmarket is a pace favouring track. Front runners do well at Newmarket, and I wouldn't completely discount Pitchcombe uh, at a massive price if he gets, if he gets an easy, um, like an uncontested lead. I don't think he especially will. Um, the other thing to look at is always the data view, and we can see that if I just sort it by last run. I'm looking for the fours basically, and I can see that Pitchcombe is a perma, perma leader, uh, always in the lead. Uh, Rodan is normally front rank. Sheen Murphy is riding him tomorrow. Biggles is prominent, and we can see at the top that historically, in this course, distance, field size, going, um, handicaps, uh, context, all of those things are factored into these numbers here and this table here. So those at the back. And those in midfield have got not a great record at all. Um, those on or near the front are the ones to look at. And so on the graphic, we could almost do that. And we could say, right, well, sort of these five, and maybe these guys as well, are, are, are where we want to focus. 
Um, instant expert is a great a great thing to look at for these exposed handicaps where there's a bit more form in the book. And again, I like to put it on place quite often to get a bit more data. Um, you'll see that I have the two year view. You can set this up in your my GG. So this is this is my configuration here for instant expert. I've got um, the two year view. I set it up to be handicap rule. So this is a handicap race. So it's only showing handicap form. If I change this to all, you'll see that this is different, not different data, it's more data. So it's the same data plus some extra. But I'm interested in uh, specifically in, in these runners forming handicaps. Uh, and I've got it set to um, race code contextual. Now you can have all codes as well. So contextual is this is a flat turf race. So I've got it. I've got all the form displayed relating to flat turf races. Now I could choose all codes or I could choose flat and all weather um, or, you know, any of these permutations here. But I like the contextual view. I like it to be on handicap data only when it's a handicap. And I like it to be two year. That's always my starting position. Now, very often I move these things around because I want to, you know, I want to see which horses come into focus and go out of focus as I change, as I move the lens, if you like. Um, masked identity is interesting. Uh, if you click on any of these boxes, so for instance, I can see the masked identity in the last two years in flat handicaps um, has placed twice out of twice, twice out of two even at Newmarket. So if I click on this, I can see what he did. I can see that he ran prominently both times. I can see that he finished first and second, first in a class three, second in a class four, both on easy ground, soft and heavy. Um, Josephine Gordon rode both times. The ratings were 81 and 83. He's 80 here, so he's feasibly handicapped. Um, and he looks like he has a chance, but I, I'd be, I mean, we'll have to see what the going is, but that would be, the, it's not, you know, it's not a grave concern because it's only, zero from one here um and on a different track which may not have suited this is a straight track sandown's mile is round a bend um so that's kind of uh mast mast identity is an interesting runner biggles on the other hand against these parameters has got uh no data at all so um uh, excuse me one second come here come 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 Oh, they are. You just can't see them. They can see you though. See you in the morning. Sorry about that. That's my uh, my um, best bit of joy in the day, really. Except that he didn't close the door. <sighs> right. Where were we? Yes, Biggles. Um, uh, no form in these conditions, and that, that of course is because he's a handicapped debutant, as you remember. Um, HC1 here. So um, I've got this set to handicap form. He hasn't got any handicap form yet. Likewise, it looks like Widard is a, um, a handicap debutant as well. Uh, no, he's not. Just got no form against these these conditions because he's been running on faster ground over a different trip in a different grade and on the all weather. So that's why Widard is not on here. Um, anyway, I, I've spoken about this race longer than I intended. All I wanted to do, like I'm not saying any of these are a bet um, because it depends on the price. The price always makes the play. But I thought Rafe Beckett is in good form. Let's just have a quick look at trainer form. So this icon here is the trainer form icon. We can see that Rafe, um, you know, 20 and 24 percent on a good number of runners, around about 50 percent placed, uh, beating two thirds of their rivals. These are really really good numbers uh good uh, uh middle above average track record in the five years not not so good in the last year um but i just yeah i think this guy is um is quite interesting now if you want to look at trainer jockey under the jockey form icon um we have a trainer jockey line which isn't here and that presumably is because Crean hasn't ridden for beckett before um you can see that if i look at clover and pearson here there is a TJ combo line at the bottom there. Um, but 
Beckett and Crean are a virgin partnership. Will they get off to a flyer tomorrow? Tune in to find out. Um, <laughs> I do. I do think. I think Biggles is interesting there. Obviously, quite a, a number of these are essentially what they are. They haven't got much improvement in them. This lad's had three goes, drops into a handicap on seventy-two. Um, just kind of feel like he's probably got a little bit of upside from there. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if Biggles tracked the pace set by Rodan and Pitchcomb uh, and uh, prevailed late. It also wouldn't surprise me if one of those two went gate to wire. So that's that race. Um, the 350, I looked at it and I just thought, I, I, I didn't really have anywhere to go with it. It just looked a bit like a pizza. You know, it's just, just like um, lots of different colours in kind of equal measure, nothing really standing out, lots of zeros and lots of ones. So just sometimes a race looks too competitive. Sometimes I don't think I know enough. And this is one of those. I just don't think I know, know enough here. So I haven't got a better, you know, I've got 11 to look at. And um, this one's an easy knockout for me. There's no, you know, I couldn't find an in. I couldn't find a pace in. It, it looked a uh, you know, it didn't really look like even pace, but it wouldn't, you know, different, different horses might lead on different days. Um, I couldn't find uh, a form profile in and I couldn't really find a trainer in. I suppose George Bowie is a trainer in form, but his horse isn't well suited to the condition. He's got the zero from five at a mile. Um, so, yeah, it was it, that was a no for me. Uh, the other race at Newmarket was a 420. And just before I look at that, I just want to break off for a second um, because I just want to, I just want to um, reiterate um, that I haven't done very well with this. Too much chat. Um, uh, I wanted to reiterate that um, the purpose of this video is is to kind of show you what's there and where it lives. I'm not. Obviously, I, I'm I'm now talking through form. I'm not explaining what each of these things does. If you want to know that kind of information, it's in the videos. It's in the user guide. Um, if you just if you don't even look at the videos or the user guide, if you just use the stuff, if you just click buttons through that kind of experiential osmosis, um, you will you'll get to grips with it. You know, none of it's none of it's particularly complex. Um, and most of this stuff, let me just um, do the uh, do the switcheroo again. Um, most of this stuff is, if you've been using Racing Post, at least is intuitive. I mean, this layout is very familiar if you're a Racing Post user. Uh, we have this then what stuff on the other side that shows you how the form's working out, runs, wins and places, win and place percent. So that's sometimes interesting. Um, and we've got the career records underneath the last six runs here. Um, you can look at uh, sectional data as well if you're if that's your thing. I'm definitely not talking about that tonight. Um, again, there is information on that elsewhere on the website. Use the search button to find it. So this uh, this is the 420. Now this is an apprentice hands and heels handicap. Mm, interesting, um, and almost certainly a no bet race. But there was one thing that I thought was quite interesting. I think he's been backed actually. Just looking at that. Uh, no, not especially. No. Okay. So, um, again, we've got, we've got a situation where there's quite a lot of these, um, the red blocks when it's none from one, I'm always a little bit apprehensive about those. I mean, they're essentially, there's no evidence, you know, it's not, you, you definitely couldn't say a horse is not suited by something cause it's tried it once and it didn't work out. Um, so th that's that's something to be aware of. But when you get to a naught from eight, then you know you can kind of you can have a bit more um, a slightly greater degree of confidence that maybe for Athel Blair Boy, who is the nine to two second favourite, um, he did win last time. That was over seven, I think. Um, yeah, this is six. Sorry, he's. Um, Let's have a look at his form, just to remind myself. 
Yeah, he won over seven at Newcastle. He's normally ridden by Faye McManaman, and um, this was a amateur jockeys race. Charlotte Mulhall gets on, and um, uh, I don't suppose that was a. I'm sure Faye was cheering for Charlotte. Um, Oshin McSweeney is an interesting uh, apprentice. Again, you know, definitely pays to be to have an awareness of these um, up and coming apprentices. Fred Lars Larson is attached to the Appleby Yard, and I think he's um, definitely one to keep an eye on. This horse, Bezzer's Lad, is in a bit of form. First and second in his last two starts. But the thing I like about him, again, we're six furlongs at Newmarket, so we know we're on the straight track. We know we've got a prominent to lead bias because we've got these green blobs here um if we put this on the graphic the heat map um we can see that fred and beza uh figure to be on or near the front what sort of pace contention are they going to get it's really hard to say because this is an apprentice race so um these these guys a lot of them are very inexperienced apprentices as well it's a hands and heels race they may not have the kind of um the race know-how that they haven't got the the chops you know that some of the more experienced apprentices have so um you've got to be a bit wary there's every chance that one of them gets run away with by their horse what i know about bezzer's lad is that he's quite an experienced professional horse um he is a his run style of choice is to be front rank um, <clears throat> on a track that suits that. He can take back and just be behind the lead as well. So I think he's, you know, at least relatively tractable in that context. And um, he's got quite a nice form profile for the race. Um, if we put this on the place again, and we can see that um, the class is a question mark, but the trip is is right for him. We can also see that if you look at these six furlong forms, so he's, he's placed three times, he's actually won twice, and you can see both times he led, he won. But what's interesting, I thought, about these five runs was that uh, when he was well beaten here, it was soft ground. And when he was well beaten here, it was soft ground. And when it was good ground, he finished first, third, first. Um He's up a little bit in the handicap, but Fred takes off six. So essentially that puts him back to 60. Again, you know, like a, he's not, I don't think he's chucked in. Um, I don't think he's a, an exciting nap bet, whatever one of those is. But he looks to have a strong chance in a in a pretty competitive looking race where um, regardless of the competitiveness of the horses, a lot has to be taken on trust with the jockeys. Um, so it's not it's not really a betting race, but if you know, I think Beza is probably place pot material. Let's say that, except it's the seventh race, of course, so it's not a place pot race. Um, let's move on. The four fifty five at Newmarket was the next of my uh, four year old plus handicaps, and um, this is another apprentice handicap. I had it down as uh, on the tough side. Again, I start with looking, just seeing if there's any advantage or disadvantage uh, on the pace map. And we've got a situation here where we've got very, very little data in the window. Um, so I tend to just kind of stretch out the the um, the going range. Now, of course, when I do that, I'm diluting the value of the information because I'm I'm generalizing what was a specific going before. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm cognized, I'm consciously doing that. I know, I know that I'm getting less utility from the information, but I want a bigger data set. What we actually need to do is get percentage of rivals beaten on this grid. And that will be, uh, more instructive. I think, um, again, the pace maps, you know, even doing this, it's still ambiguous or even ambiguous. I'm sure that isn't a word. Um, it, it's not clear. That, <laughs> that That's definitely a better way of putting it. It's it's an unclear picture. So um, it's confused, as am I. And then on here, I mean, I, Espresso Freddo, you know, he, he's actually got a pretty likable um, uh, consistency about him. He's against these conditions. He's pretty much always thereabouts. Um, Soft ground, good ground, heavy ground. He's he takes it all 
in his stride. A mile is, uh, well, obviously that, that's on the, the mile there, but bigger fields are, are not really an issue to him last three times. He is up a little bit in the handicap. He's up seven for that win. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was an easy win, but um, but a horse, how many goes has Espresso Freddo had? Uh, he is 55 runs into his career. So I'm not really convinced that he suddenly, of course, that is his, um, uh, that's his turf mark. Um, I think he might have separate turf and all weather marks. Anyway, he, he's, um, we shouldn't expect him to be leaping forward in that way, in the way that the handicapper has, um, leapt him forward. Uh, I think that's a little bit unfair to him, actually. For all that, he probably will run a very uh, gallant race again and, you know, may very well. He's the sort of horse at that kind of price that you could look at from an each way extra perspective. One for Bet365 does that. And you may be betting with five places or something like that. And, um, you know, he, he's very likely to give his running. Um, he's probably not going to be troubling the lead early and therefore he's more likely to just to not be compromised by however the, the race is run doesn't look like it's going to be fiercely run nothing in the lead column um but yeah so he uh, you know uh, espresso to be in the first five but uh, maybe that's not your betting style <laughs> he, he'd be one of the more interesting ones in a race that if not inscrutable is certainly um uh less less concrete than plenty of others um i want to look at the 340 that's the race that we've talked about already the york seven furlong race um and again we've got you know we can see that out here is is difficult um <clears throat> there are a few fancied runners i mean 14 to 1 in this field is is relatively fancied and you've got get knotted who's a bit of a course specialist you've got cassio another one you've got uh, tom collins car park star shield car park um hold up which you know maybe is the way to play if they went really hard early but it doesn't look like there's not tons of pace it's just this one horse in in the lead column and look it's written by ryan moore hmm, interesting except that lead is not is not the way to get it done uh over this course and distance so again you know it's not uh, it's not the clearest i i, I think i'd be I'd be against these guys anyway, and already that gives me um, a bit more value on anything else I fancy because it's, there's a six to one and a seventeen to two here. I th I, to be honest, I don't think still fourteen is is not sufficiently car park um, that I'd be massively against Baldwin. I wouldn't want to bet him at that price, but I, I, I'm not saying he can't win. I'm not saying any of them can't win, but particularly not him. Um, but what we can see here is that there's a lot of green here. This is just a competitive race. Now, a couple of things that I do in big fields, a couple of things that I am I particularly look out for in big fields and, and in seven furlong big field races, I am interested in um, big field form, big field handicap form and seven furlong form. Seven furlongs are little bit of a specialist distance. It's not three quarters of a mile or a mile. It's seven eighths of a mile. Um, and in that context, Trinity Lake uh, looks to have a pretty good profile fit. Now, again, I'm not um, I'm not mad about the horse's chance, but I can see that it was third of 17 in a class four, seven furlong, good ground York handicap off 78. Uh, it's now off 79 in a class four, seven furlong, good ground York handicap. Um, Looking at the comment there, ridden a not clear run when lost position over two furlongs out. In the clear over a furlong out, ran on well final furlong, went third post. Got trouble in running. Um, still finished third in a very similar race at, at a big price. So um, again, Trinity Lakes are kind of an interesting horse in a race that is a bit too competitive for me. But wouldn't surprise me if that one ran really well. Um and that brings us to Hamilton. Now, who knows what the weather's going to be at Hamilton? In fact, why don't we have a look at what they're currently saying about it? You don't have to be completely ignorant. Um, good to soft. 
we had three mil, blah, blah, blah. Thursday, isolated showers and sunny spells. Friday, light clouds. So probably, I mean, assuming they miss all the showers, then good to soft is is what we can go with. Okay. Um, the, f- the first race on that car was a 640. And um, there's a horse here. It's not much of a price, actually, but for for legitimate reason. I mean, we can see that Flying Moon has a very appealing profile against conditions within two pounds of his last winning rating. So this is today's rating. This is his last winning official rating on on the same code. So in flat turf races, so he won off 58. Now he's off 60. Uh, obviously a difference of two. Um, he's a three-time winner over a mile in the last two years. Uh, good to soft is fine for him. This grade is fine. The course is fine. If we look at him on the profiler tool, so I haven't shown you the profiler. Let's have a look at the profiler. Um, flying moon. Interesting. You can see that the um, today's conditions are highlighted. So you can see here that a uh, good to soft record, you know, four out of five in the frame on good to soft, five out of eight in the frame, three wins um, at a mile. Class five and class six is his territory. Uh, Hamilton Park, great record at Hamilton. This field size uh, and big area is not a problem to him. Uh, down the bottom of the weights is not a problem to him. For this trainer, done really well. For this jockey, six out of seven in the frame for Paddy Mathers. Uh, basically just a very, a very um, solid profile. Um, and if you wanted to do further stuff with full form, you could do it here. So this is another um, tool that gives you things to configure and play around with. The one thing that I did notice about this guy was that um, he was fifth last time, and that was his first run for six months. Um, so he was kind of, it wasn't a bad run, you know, his run uh, beaten four lengths. Um <clears throat> and um, before that, he was on a very progressive, uh, very progressive upward curve, for, albeit from a low base. This is a low grade handicap. Um, he's got to have a very good chance, hasn't he? And look, he's been backed already. Probably don't know what price he was earlier, but I'm not. You know, it's no surprise that he's been well backed. Um, looks to have a pretty obvious chance. Um, the 7:45 was the next one got a couple more to do so hang in there i don't want to go on for too much longer but hopefully there's some you know even if even if only by repetition hopefully you can see the kind of things that i'm looking at i'm looking at trainer form i'm looking at uh, form profiling i'm looking at the pace maps um if it seems i'm not looking at the draw i kind of am doing it but by using the heat map so i'm i'm using that shortcut um to be aware of uh favored or unfavored sectors of the draw um so that's that of course i could look specifically at that at that tab now in this race um eric block looks like he might lead um not not a clear leader and on the last two we can see that's <clears throat> less clear again um if i just sort by the pace here i like to do this i like to see so eric was the only one that led last time and you can see that he's led in three of his last four so he he's whereas i am a dreamer has led in only one of his last four um and nothing else has led in any of their last three although a couple led further back so the percentage play for leader in this race is definitely eric um this is a track that favors um front end speed over six furlongs as we can see with this green blob here um so that's a tick in eric's box on the form profile and again you know the Instant Expert works really well when there's when there's quite a bit of form to go at. Uh, I can put that on all, and you know you can you can extend these out. But I think there's plenty to go out in the last two years for these horses. Um, this is on the win, nothing really standing out. But if we go to the place, all of a sudden Eric um, advertises his claims a little more, um, and we can see that the distance. Uh, he was a winner at air last time, but interesting. Uh, it's always worth looking. It's always worth clicking these, um, the colored blobs to look at the inline form, because for instance, with Eric here, ostensibly he's only been in the frame twice 
out of six runs at six furlongs. But if we look in a little more detail um, here in the Air Bronze Cup, a class two handicap, this is a class four handicap. He led, he tried to make all in a 23 runner handicap and he only got beaten a couple of lengths at the end. It was a very bold effort from the front there. And before that, um, at Thursk in a naught to 80, uh, same as this one, um, he led in a field of 20 and he was a two length fourth. So this is a shallower field. Um, and we can see that in fields of this size, um, he's got a win and a place as well. So I'm kind of, I, 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 I think there's a very good chance that Eric Block leads on a track that favours early speed and he might get picked up by one or two of them, but I think he's an each way price and I think he's probably, he's probably going to run very close to the frame anyway. Um, he's kind of interesting. Um, Roger Fell is a good trainer, has a good track record, um, in fair form at the moment, not, you know, nothing knocking your eye out. He's a 9% trainer overall. That's another thing that's worth doing. Um, if you look at these, these snippets down here are two year form snippets. Um, so we can see that Roger Fell overall is a 9% trainer and a 28%, 29% place strike rate. Um, the percentage of rivals beaten just north of the magic 50. And um, we can see at the moment he's kind of, you know, in the last month, he's above those figures. So the, the yards in in fair fettle, um, his record at the track is above his overall figures. Um, Eric has been very consistent. I, I, I Yeah, I think he must have a he must have a reasonable chance. Tomorrow. It is quite a competitive race. Obviously, Pearl of Cato is a is a contender and there's a few others. Um who are probably ascendant in their profile as well. But I, I think Eric would be probably be thereabouts. Um, the 820. Now I, I was, I was sort of, I was not really into this one particularly. Um, I mean, it's a not to six. This is the same course and distance, but it's a lower grade. It's a not to 65 class six, whereas the other ones are not to 80 class four. Um, uh, competitive enough, fair, albeit at a low grade. And again, I'm on the place form. Um, now, the one that caught my eye was the one all in orange. Um, let me just put him up here a bit. This Carlovian, and um, I liked his, I liked his um, consistency with a bit of give in the ground so if we take this good to firm run out we've got first third second third big field third here um and um yeah you know he's one pound below his last winning mark i mean it doesn't really mean much when they're rated 48 um but i just thought he he was you know obviously the this is the right race for him look he's got amber and green for everything um pace wise uh, just that's an annoyance that I need to get fixed. Um, it nothing sort of race from a pace angle. Um, it just um, it it it'd probably be run evenly. I mean, it's a six furlong sprint, so then very unlikely to be run at a dawdle, but it won't be overly strong either because you can see there's nothing in the lead column. Um, so a couple of these would probably take it up potentially on sufferance. Um, Carlovian won't be far away. And um, for a trainer who's in form, that was a, another thing that I picked up from the 14 there um, here, Mark Walford. Um, we can see that his record in the last month is very good. PRB's 55, which is great um, uh, in handicaps. You know, he's just a underrated trainer looking at these profit figures and a, all of his numbers are, are pretty strong, does well with sprinters. Um, yeah, I just thought Carl Ovin, yeah, I'm not I'm not expecting anything to suddenly find seven pounds of improvement here. So it's going to be the horse that's best suited to conditions on the day. And Carluvian might well be that guy. Um, again, we've got trainer stats for the last 14 days. We've got jockey stats at this track for the last year. So no negatives, really. He he was interesting. And again, he's a sort of an each way price. Um, 
and the last race was the 850 uh i'll be in bed by then um now this this is a five i i i love five furlong handicaps but this one um <laughs> this one's too difficult for me i think uh the first thing to do is to look at the pace tab and again i've got some gray there so i'm sort of extending it out to get a bit more data but i still got no data so i don't i don't want to make any inferences from this the fact that one out of two one from the front and the other one one from a prominent position may be relevant it might not be um what i do know is that <clears throat> kanar kanar if that's how you say it uh may lead and um that may be you know in the context of this very small very very small data set that might be significant um he might have a chance but I really, I don't like the race. Instant expert. Um, there's one horse there that kind of flags itself a little bit. Hard solution, uh, who has a good, a very good course record. In fact, um, uh, he might run well, but this is a race where he's generally, you can see he's here, he's generally weighted with. And if there was loads of pace on the front, you might think, well, they'll come back to him. But I just think he's going to arrive too late, most likely. Um, drop another couple and then win when the pace setup is right for him another day. So, but I couldn't find a bet in here. So that was a bit of a damp, damp and squibby end to my quick fire preview. Um, a lot of those race analyses were uh, were of the same style. Um, I haven't shown you any of the reports. I haven't shown you. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't shown you most of most of the stuff we've got. In fairness, but I've shown. I, I wanted to. I wanted to do some stuff around the race cards, um, because that's that's where you're most likely to start your gold, your Gigi's journey. Um, and I hope that um, that you've got a few ideas of things to look at, even if you're a, a long term subscriber. Um, I hope you've got a few ideas of things to look at. Um, I I can't see any more questions. Oh, there's one from Chris here. Um, actually, before I answer that question, just to say, in the box underneath the YouTube video that you're watching. Ooh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, in the box underneath the video, um, there is a link, the discount link. Um, we're not yet full. We are getting towards full, so that's great. I'm um, I, I'm really pleased with the way it's going. I, I first of all, I hate selling. Um, you know, if you run a business, you've got to sell stuff, but it's not. It doesn't come naturally to me, even as much as I love and uh, evangelize about the toolkit that we have because I've used all the other ones and I know that what we've got is different gear. I still hate kind of you know, being a little bit pushy with that. So um, I'm very glad that it's the end of this week, not the start of it, and that we can just get back to um, talking about the cool stuff rather than trying to persuade people. Anyway, all that said, if you haven't yet been persuaded, <laughs> uh, there is still time. There's a link beneath this video. And um, if that link is still there, then that offer is still open. If it's gone, then obviously it's gone. But you can still sign up for a um, a monthly uh a, a monthly subscription at the regular price um i think that's plenty that's kind of an hour and 20 um oh there are a couple of questions here let me just cover those off before we close um do you back horses just based on the pace of the race uh no i don't no absolutely not no i back horses based on a combination of the pace in the race uh the form profile the form of the trainer and um depends on the kind of race but often um on a little insight uh that is none of those things like for instance biggles where the in if you like was the trainer's first time in a handicap record he's he obviously knows how to get his horses a competitive handicap mark and and thereafter how to exploit that how to um how to how to make turn that into a win convert it um but pace is i i never look at a race i never look at a race without looking at the pace map um because 
it's fundamental you know it's like the best horse in the race very often not very often but sometimes cannot win because of of where it's um you know where it's drawn or it's run style or a combination of those things conversely a horse with a middling um form profile ostensibly ca can be significantly um upgraded on the basis of where it's housed in the stalls and, and its run style and one other factor associated with that is when we're looking at these four-year-old plus handicaps um the handicapper has actually done a job for us so if a horse if, if all the horses have run 10 or 15 times then they pretty much are what they are and if they're all in the same handicap grade then they're all pretty much the same horse generally speaking and so it's not about finding the horse in the best form who can step forward another seven or ten pounds it's about finding the horse that is the best fit for the race conditions so all of those races i've shown you in this video are races where the the form profile of the horses and the pace profile of the race the run style profile of the race and the draw and the course configuration they are the key considerations because all of the horses are of similar abilities and some of them will have shown it more recently than others the ideal scenario is when we've got a horse with great relevant form a little while back in his um in his form profile but he's been running under different conditions recently um dropping down the handicap is now well below his last winning mark returns to a set of conditions that are optimal for him has a good draw and run style and you know those horses like by the time the race goes off those horses are generally pretty much the price they should be but the night before and in the morning um till about 11 maybe even midday those horses will be you know sometimes massively the wrong price so those are the things that we're looking for because as i say you know again last time i'm going to labor this um they're not they're not going to suddenly dive forward seven or ten pounds of improvement they're all much of a muchness so yeah that's that so no um always look at the pace in different race contexts if, if we were looking at unexposed two-year-olds or novice hurdles i'd be looking at trainer form in those races i'd be looking at sire stats i'd be looking at all sorts of other different things um uh tony bryan says i think the hot form report adds value um i think well unequivocally that hot form report is is, is a very interesting report um there are lots of other, i think um josh wright did a video on gold today and he highlighted some stuff from the hot form i know that uh sam our uh, weekend preview guy is mad about hot form as well um all of the reports have good value some of them have great value um watch the reports video and you'll get get an in on those um obviously i couldn't cover everything in this in this video um chris Harmon says how do you tend to use speed ratings i'm not really a ratings guy um i will look at speed ratings particularly in sprint races um i think the best speed ratings tend to um the form tends to stand up with speed ratings most often when you when the when the race is going to be truly run but not overly fast so when our pace prediction is even and it pans out that way <clears throat> i think that's the best time to get a speed rating but i'd be more about form profiles and draw and pace um than i would about pure speed ratings i have started to look at sectional upgrades and got quite interested in that um that's not really you know, it's not at all for this video um but that's some interesting stuff and we've got some fast finishers content coming um in a day or three it's been a bit it, it was very easy to get it 90 percent done the last 10 percent has been a little bit arduous uh, but we're very nearly there now so um hopefully that'll be around soon um what's the max or min handicap that you would use to bet or not better race um not sure i understand that one leon if you mean what sort of level uh class or something like that or rating official rating um no maximum no minimum um it's handicap races are by definition um pitting races where horses of 
uh, largely similar ability are pitted together. Um, some of those three-year-old handicaps, uh, horses tend to end up being a lot better than the rating that they run in off those races. And other ones tend to end up being a, a lot worse than them. So, But when you've got those four-year-old plus handicaps where they've all run a lot of times, they are where they are and that's that you know that's where they should be um so i don't there's no there's no uh floor or ceiling in in terms of that i i'm interested in all of them equally as long as there's an exposed level of form they've run a lot of times and i don't have to worry about the uh wolf in sheep's clothing okay it's nine o'clock that's an hour and a half that is plenty thank you very much for your company um i hope you've enjoyed it give me a thumbs up if you have um and um this video will be available to everybody else if you join late and you missed the start you'll be able to watch the start at your convenience um probably pretty much straight away i hope it's added some value giving you some food for thought if you're not yet a gold subscriber and that link is still beneath this video on youtube um you've still got time to come and join us if you'd like to uh if the 149 is a bit rich for you or you're not quite sure you can take the, the the monthly trial option and that might be better for you at this stage to see how you go. Um, if you've got any questions, please send us an email. There's a contact details on the website. Either Chris or Sam or myself will get back to you with an answer. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you soon. I will do more of these videos. I actually, I was really looking forward to it. And, and then I spent 40 minutes um, messing up the tech, which kind of stressed me out a bit. But uh, in the end, it's been a lot of fun. And um, I look forward to doing some more of this kind of stuff soon. Thank you again for your time and for watching. And if you're a gold subscriber, especially thank you to you for, for doing that. And I hope it's uh, adding value to your game. Uh, Matt Bizzoni saying bye for now. Talk to you soon.